And then we are in the estuary of the River Tagus on our approach to Lisbon. On the south bank, several new towns are being developed around new factory sites. The Tagus is the longest river in Portugal and runs on through the country from its source in Spain. In places, the estuary is eight miles wide. The Torre de Belém was built in the 16th century to commemorate the Portuguese conquests in India. This curious mixture of Gothic, Roman and Muslim architecture is found only in Portugal. This new statue of Christ now dominates the approach to Lisbon and is symbolic of the deeply religious sentiment of the Portuguese people. It is a copy of the famous one at the entrance to Rio de Janeiro and lifts carry sightseers to the top of the plinth. Another new addition is this impressive monument dedicated to Dom Enrique, founder of the Nautical Training School, and with Vasco da Gama, discoverer of the sea route to India. It is astonishing to remember that this small nation once boasted the greatest sailors and biggest empire in the world. Lisbon itself was almost completely destroyed by the earthquake of 1755, and very little now remains from any period before that. Marble steps lead up to the Torreiro de Passo, or Black Horse Square. Government offices surround the square on three sides, whilst in the center stands the statue of Don Jose I, the king reigning at the time of the catastrophic earthquake, and responsible with his prime minister, the Marquis de Pombal, for rebuilding the town. The statue was cast from 38 tons of bronze by the great sculptor Machado de Castro. This magnificent arch took over a century to complete and the allegorical group on top shows glory crowning the genius and the virtue. Anybody like bananas? Rocio Square is the Piccadilly Circus of Lisbon and what town centre would be complete without its flower women? This square has been the scene of many historical events, from burnings and executions of the various inquisitions to court festivals and celebrations. From Rossio Square stretches the Avenue da Libertad, almost a mile long, and comparing with the Champs Elysees for beauty. The pattern laid out in stones, that of a galleon, is the traditional emblem of the city. The avenue is surmounted by the monument to the Marquis de Pombal. The groups dramatically depict the burden of man and represent the great work done in rebuilding the city. Lisbon is a city which has always respected the arts and this is reflected in the many statues representing almost every historical event since 1755. Boys are the same the world over and can always find a use for a coin. The modern part of Lisbon compares with any city in the world. Building of these modern blocks and apartments has been proceeding since 1938 with wide roads to match. It contrasts strangely with the old city with its narrow streets. Certainly the most picturesque quarter of the city, its quaintness echoes its past. The people here are descended from the original conquerors of the city, the Moors, and are still mostly associated with the sea. The men as fishermen and dockers, and the women as fishmongers plying their trade in the streets. And this? Well, no large city in Portugal or Spain would be complete without its bullring. The 
elevator takes us to the top of one of the seven hills of Lisbon. This is a favorite trysting place for young Portuguese lovers and offers a magnificent view of the surrounding scenery and the other six hills. If you have time to look at them. Atop another of the hills stands the castle of Santa Georgia. This is a natural defensive position for the town and the fortress was in fact built by the Moors in the 12th century. After they were driven from the city, it became the royal palace and later a military barracks and prison until it was finally abandoned after the earthquake. Nowadays, it's answer these birds, majestic white peacocks and flamingos, enjoying the sanctuary of its walls and adding color and beauty to these otherwise somber surroundings. shot at. Ah, oh, there's something. Did I hit it? One can't leave Lisbon without being impressed by the character and personality of this beautiful and graceful city, a city of contrasts where the old and the young manage to blend in agreeable harmony. Rossio Square provides a sparkling display of neon signs, and behind this fountain can be seen the National Theatre. too soon we are on the way home. Just time for a few more games of shuffleboard. It'll take a few more cruises to become expert at that. As we travel further north we can feel it growing ever colder but there are still some hardy souls happy to take advantage of the last bit of sun. Of course tea is still served but now under cover on the promenade deck. Careful of those cream pastries now. How much weight have I put on? Oh well I'll worry about that tomorrow. Soon, familiar shores are looming up ahead, and we are welcomed home in all too familiar style. Yes, we are home all right, but we have our memories, memories which will last us a long time. <laughs> 